This video is sponsored by Wing Wing Technology, your ultimate fly sim hardware solution. Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing very well. There are lots, probably hundreds of mods for DCS World. Every now and then one comes through which catches your attention for being really good. Examples of that so far, MB339, which is now being converted into a professional paid mod, A4E Skyhawk, the C130 Hercules, these really high definition clickable cockpit mods. And now we've got a fourth one. We've got the Brazilian a29 Bravo Super Tucano. We've just spent a few hours on it and it is excellent. All free and as far as we're aware, don't need any kind of donor planes to work. So we're going to show in this video how to download, how to install, how to set up your controls and set up a mission, how to rearm, how to cold start, looking at the instruments of the cockpit, the UFC and the HUD, selective jettison, general navigation and waypoint creation, air to ground weapons, and air to air weapons. Let's start with download. You'll start from this screen and obviously you will find this link in the video description you're watching now. Code, download zip. Once that's done, go to our generic downloads area. You will find this zip file. Click on the zip file and then we're gonna right click there and copy. Next, we're gonna go and find our saved game. For me, C drive, users, my particular user, saved games. I've got DCS open better, yours may just be DCS. Mods folder, if you don't have it, please make it and call it exactly the same as that. Aircraft folder, same deal. Right click, paste, and you can see I've got mine there. That's it, it's downloaded and installed. I'm gonna start up DCS now. It is the latest open beta version, 12th March, 2021. From the main menu, the first thing we need to do is set up our controls. So, options, controls find, uh, scroll to the top, find the A29B. I'm gonna show you all of the controls that I've set. So first, into axis commands, move it over there. I would suggest setting zoom view, and I've got mine on a axis or a slider. If you've got rudder pedals with toe brakes, set wheel brake left, wheel brake right, although actually I think wheel brake, just basic wheel brake will do the same job, but I'm just used to using two like that. Thrust, obviously, You'll need rudder, in this case I've put it on my uh, pedals. You'll need roll as an axis, you'll need pitch as an axis. On to the more normal commands, we'll scroll down to the bottom. Throttle, and ensure we have cage, uncage, and machine gun selection is all we need here. These two and these four are not used at the moment, they will be in the future, so it's up to you whether you want to buy them now or wait, so you can make that decision. Next, we're gonna to go to systems, set air brake on and off. It doesn't actually work at the time of making this video, video, but it will in the future. Flaps, landing, flaps up, landing gear up, landing gear down. Next, stick. I'll we'll start from the bottom again. Weapon release to, for instance, drop bombs or fire rockets. Don't need undesignate at the moment, but you can if you want. Trim, up, down, left and right, I'd put them in. Step, we don't really need that at the moment. Master mode, it's good to have these, I think. Nav, air to ground, air to air intercept, air to air dogfight. Trigger, you've got a first detent and a second detent, so set them. Uh, data management switch, we don't need them at the moment, uh, but you can do them if you want. Designate, I've done that, but it, it doesn't actually use a designate at the moment, so you can put it in there if you want. Cool, I'm pretty sure that's gonna be the radio. It doesn't work at the moment, but you can put it if you want. And I don't think these two are used at the moment, but you can put them if you want. Next. Hotas, this is actually going to repeat some of them, but we'll look anyway. And just look for anything new. No, that's just the same ones. Flight control, no. And that is us done. So not many controls, uh, which is good. Click OK. Next, we're going to set a mission up. Probably the easiest way to follow this, follow this plane, I think, is just go to Mission Editor. Create a new mission on Caucasus. We have a mission set up here and ready to go, but just show you how we can do it. We can click on Add Aircraft Group there. I can click on maybe that part of the base there. I can select A29B there. I can select client there or player if it's single player only. I can start him from parking hot, for instance, there. If I want to arm up, I can click here. I can click under the pylons and look at the various weapons. We'll go through that in a minute anyway. And then that will be that guy ready to go. I'm gonna delete him in this case. What we've got so that you know for later on for the navigation part is some aircraft set here on the ground. Waypoint one will be there, preset in the mission editor. Waypoint two there, preset in the mission editor. Waypoint three at the target, not set in the mission editor. We're gonna add that via the aircraft cockpit and the targets will be there 
ready for us to attack. Let's save and get in game. Myself and Simba are in cold started aircraft. The first thing we are going to do when our engine is turned off, spooled down and our canopy is up is go to the rearmament menu to rearm. If you don't know, it's that command there. So, here we go. We've got five pylons plus a smoke pylon. You can change your fuel, you can change your gun ammo. We can also change our livery if you want. I'm going to change mine because I can. Pylon five I'm going to start with. These are asymmetric pylons, so you do not have to have a symmetric loadout. I'm going to go for the only air-to-air -air weapon in terms of guided weapon, AIM-9 Mike. Next, number four, I can have air-to-ground missiles, the AGM-144K times two Hellfire. We haven't actually got those working at the moment. We can fire them, but we can't get them to guide, so for the time being, we'll leave that. Instead of that, let's have another type of guided munition. Let's have a GBU-12, that's a 500 pound laser guided bomb. We do not have a teapot at the moment, so we cannot do our own lasing for the time of making this video. We have, however, set a third party buddy lase to be lasing with his teapot, and we can use his lays. Next, bombs. Let's have a, a generic uh, Mark 82. I should really actually go through everything else. Bombs, CBU-105. Wind corrected and 97 non wind corrected with intelligent guiding puck cluster munition. 500 pound, I think that's a 1000 pound laser guided bomb. Slick retarded, slick retarded. Fuel tank is a fuel tank. Rockets allow 61 pod with 19 2.75 inch, allow 68 with 2.75 inch Willy Pete and high explosive 151 warheads. In fact, we'll have one here. Rockets paired pod there. And on here, let's have, what, what can we else, what can we have? Um, I'm just going to try the Hellfire again, why not? It's going to be fun. Arm up and wait. A quick look at the model. As you can see, it's pretty top notch. A lot of work has gone into this, uh, into this mod. tiny little trainer that can carry an awful lot of weapons. We're now fully armed and we're going to do a cold start. To help us with this we have Lucas who is not a developer but if you like a representative of this module. Hello Lucas. Hello. Right, cold start. Send. At the right panel, MDP1 and 2 on. Done. Avionics Master on. Done. SMS on. Done. Air conditioning and recirculation fan off. Done. Temperature to code. Done. Auto to man. Done. Below the temperature. Roger. Battery to on. Done. Generator to on. Done. Backup generator to on. Yep, on, set to auto. Parking brake brakes applied. Stand by. That's Left to the main pumps. Done. Two clicks. Yep. At the left panel, you have it at the bottom of the panel the emergency speed brake to norm. Done. MPU above the throttle to auto. Done. Ignition to auto. Done. Beacon to on. Done. Main pumps to on. Auto. Done. Now start. Push now for three seconds. Yeah, maybe two two seconds. Just to wait the engine starts pulling up. Roger. Well, and I used uh, a right mouse button for that for me. At the MFG, you can see the engine is pulling up. Roger. When do we consider it spooled up? 64.5%. Uh, 64.5. Roger. While we're waiting for that, do we just wait? Just wait. Nothing Roger. to do at now. You can turn on your UFC. Rotating the white knob on the top. Done. This main warning you should to close the canopy. Roger, left control and C, close canopy. Yes. You have a, a warning, set engine limits. This warning will go off above 6668% six, 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 more or less. Roger. So to get rid of these warnings, we're going to go to. You um, have three suites there. Should I do prop Switch. as well? Yes. Okay, lights, and because it's me, I'm going to turn everything on because I can. Right, ready to take off. Thank you for that, Lucas. 
You're welcome. Next, we're going to look at the cockpit. We're not going to go for every single switch because this will turn into an hour long video. We're just going to look at banks of switches and roughly what's modelled at the moment. We'll start with the left as ever. So we've got a seat here that we can press up and down, although it doesn't actually seem to go up and down. We've got this guy, we'll see, is modelled, 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 modelled. Throttle quadrant is modelled in that it moves forwards and backwards. Moving on, engine, modelled, modelled, modelled. Exterior lights, all modelled. Internal SEP, what I've got my mouse cursor on, what's that Lucas? There's no separation for a few things. Leave it uh, when you fly in open or close if you have some damage. Thank you. External lights, modelled. Gear handle, downlock override, modelled. That thing, not modelled. What is the massive salvo, kind of jetson button, Lucas, on the left? Salvo is uh, emergency jetson. Understood. Next, two giant MFCDs, and we will come back to them a bit later. Master arm, on or safe, and the type of arm, simulation, safe, or live fire. Next, UFC, partially modelled. COM1 and COM2, currently not modelled. Nav aids, currently not modelled. Air to ground, modelled. Nav, modelled. Air to air, modelled. Alpha numeric keypad, modelled. Waypoint incrementer, modelled. Four way dobber, modelled. And we've got some other things here that modelled, but I don't want to go much further into it. The main screen is what we're showing at the moment on the main page. We're currently on auto waypoint increment. Currently have waypoint one selected, and we can change that with the incrementer like that. The current method of navigation is EGI, that is mixed INS with GPS, with a current error of less than 35 feet. COM1 is on channel 15, 302 megahertz. COM2, channel 5. 124 megahertz. Our local time is 0, 08, 28, and 18. Our current fuel level is 0, 0,455 kilograms. Lucas, what's the 2000? It's the only bit I can't figure out. 2000 is your IFF code. Oh, that's not implemented. Thank you. We'll come back to this when we do more navigation. HUD very quickly. Magnetic heading tape. Uh, instantaneous G. Speed in tens of knots. Uh, IAS, parametric altimeter, feet, current MAC, and that's the least it shows, angle of attack, positive or negative, in degrees, historical, max recorded, G. These guys here will depend on which mode we're in, so for instance, if we're in air to ground, it will show the type of targeting, CCIP, CCRP, and so on. Nav, it's not going to show anything, air to air, it will show, could show dogfight, it could show intercept, and we'll show that later. Back to nav. Time to current point of interest, obviously not applicable because we're not moving. Distance to current waypoint in nautical miles, currently selected waypoint. Roll gauge here in obvious degrees, zero degrees, 45 degrees, 30 degrees, and so on. Pitch ladder, minus five degrees, horizon, plus five degrees, and so on. Ignore the warning. Velocity vector here. Horizon line, there. Longitudinal axis or boresight cross, there. Other symbology will appear as we use it later on. Otherwise, anything to add to the hard Lucas? No, you are so clear. I best describe this as a backup ADI here with various other symbologies. This is what I call the kind of backup, backup ADI, if you like. BSI here. This panel here, kind of master audio, uh, not functional at the moment. This here, Bendix King, not functional. What is it out of interest, uh, Lucas? This one is for GPS navigation. Understood. It's not, not too far off. So miscellaneous navigation function down here, functional. Uh, as you saw the brake, functional. Fuel, manual control, functional. Make sure I haven't missed anything there. Auxiliary panel, various uh, ECS environmental control, avionics and so on, all functional. Electrical, all functional. Uh, we've got uh, ice protection, pito, uh, pitos heats here, internal lighting there. Uh, under this MFCD, these guys here currently non-functional. This is the autopilot, yeah? Understood. Next, we're going to go over the MFCDs. Like most MFCDs, they are interchangeable. You can have the various screens on either the left or the right. 
we'll just focus on the left. So, to go back to main menu, click on the currently selected page. We have all of these pages. Four of them work at the moment. The ones that don't work, say the old classic, available in two weeks. First, ADHSI. This is the mixture of a digital ADI and a digital HSI. So, for the ADI, we've got a classic ADI display here. We've got a VSI there. We've got a turn rate indicator there. We've got a magnetic heading there. Spe airspeed, barometric altitude, radar altitude, and that'll just about cover it for that. HSI, a little more complex. A cycle between different types of navigation. EGI, a mixture of INS and GPS. BOR is a type of radio navigation, if you like, um, similar to fairly similar to TACAN. Uh, GPS is GPS. ILS is instrument landing system for um, attacking a glide slope in bad weather. As I understand it, EGI works, Lucas, and the others do not. Am I correct in saying that? You are correct. Thank you. Next, the current scale of our HSI. This is essentially kind of a map, if you think about it. That's us in the middle there. That's waypoint one there. And we can change the scale in nautical miles. CDI, not functional, not functional. Swap, we'll swap the two MFCDs around. SMS is another page, but we'll come back to that. Declutter is literally a declutter. Heading, we can change our heading indicator there. In degrees, obviously you have a compass rose. We're in the middle. A waypoint comes up as pink with a waypoint number. Up here, more details. Waypoint 01, a current heading magnetic 092 from us at 5.1 nautical miles. And the time to get there is currently 99 minutes. Anything yes. else you want to go over on the HSI Lucas? For now, is just basically functions and is all you talk to is right thank you lucas next page ei cas this is a mixture of various things here is engine so we've got the temperature here of the engine we've got the torque here we've got the speed here oil pressure oil temperature electrics fuels and ability to set limits flight controls and i can for instance adjust my trim as you can see there i can put my flaps down put my flaps up and so on hydraulic pressure uh, cabin equivalents uh, uh, pressure and that's about it next nav main modes aircraft mark fyt and route and airfield sorry aircraft our current position that long decimal minute two digit Current ground speed, current true air speed, current magnetic heading, current track will almost certainly not be the same as heading, and wind. Mark allows us to place and use mark points, uh, none in at the moment. FYT, essentially these are our waypoints. So we have waypoint one, that's uh, sorry, zero, that's where we start. Waypoint one, waypoint two, and then it goes to 90. 90 to 99 are pre-set airfields two and one we added in the mission editor and zero is just where we start they have a time of flight it's got an northern easting it's got an elevation it's got a common bearing a distance and a difference in elevation of minus 6512 feet and we can also cycle like that or we can cycle up here with the incrementer a bit like the f-16 for instance route shows us all of our current waypoint chain zero one two the headings from one to the other the distance from one to the other the absolute elevation a msl and time of flights finally airfields waypoints 90 to 99 flat long elevation and the airfield international identifier we will go and add a waypoint in a bit but anything else you want to mention about this navigation page lucas just the mark point that uh, it's been um, a work in progress for now. Roger. Uh, the fourth and final working page at this stage of the build is SMS, Stores Management Screen, Stores Management System. It shows the five pylon stations we have and what is equipped. Mark 82, the Lau, the 12, AIM-9 and the pair of Hellfires. First, let's show the selective jettison. If I wanted to jettison some or all of these, selective jettison, I can then toggle the stations on 
or off on each station so I want to jettison those guys there I will need my safety so let me put the safety back on live and on and all I've got to do at that point is press the weapon release button when I'm in the air obviously and they will drop off let's get out of selective jettison inventory reminds me a bit of the A10C it will allow us to change various parameters of the weapons currently not implemented but it will be coming later get out of there when we are for instance jettisoning in certain stores we can decide if we want to jettison the weapon and or the rack so for instance if we had a rack of four bombs we could jettison the entire rack with the bombs themselves currently not working uh, current mode currently is safe as you can see but what if I press air to ground which I'm going to do now ping there we go I could have pressed it through the UFC as well a bit more information uh, let's choose we cycle through the weapons with this guy here I'm just thinking what to choose um, I don't know it's mark 82 we can choose are we gonna drop it as a single as a pair and some other weapons may have extra uh, like we can salvo for instance the uh, Lao 61 uh, sorry the rockets okay let's put everything back to how it was and above the aircraft you have the cannon 250 for each one what types of cannons are they please 50 BMG thank you Next, we want to show you how to manually enter via the UFC a waypoint. So, let's go back to nav, FYT. So, we've currently got waypoint 0, 1 and 2. Well, we want to add waypoint 3. We're going to go to our UFC here. Make sure we're in nav mode thing. We're going to click on waypoint here. We're going to increment up to waypoint 3. This is a bit like using a, uh, a DED on an F-16 if you've done that. We're going to dobber down. We're now on lat. We now need to go and get some information from the map. So if I hover above the known target, wherever it is, there it is. Look where I put my cursor. You can see at the top left, the coordinates currently in MGRS. That's no use. So left, alt and Yankee. And again, and again, and again. And that is decimal minutes. Different aircraft will have different uh, styles. And this is what we have. So I'm going to quickly write that down. Uh, taking off the rear digit, which is not needed. And the altitude of 31 feet. I'm going to type in north. So that's 2, 4, 2, 1, 0, 4, 0. Enter. Automatically dob down to here. Next, easting. Because of how this system works, we need to add an extra zero at the beginning. Four, two, zero, two, five, Enter. Field elevation. Three, one, feet. Enter. We can add in a time, but we're not going to. That is our waypoint entered. Now we're going to get back to our main menu with double left. Currently I'm on auto. Uh, currently I'm on waypoint two. I'm going to go back to one there. Release the screen. Look down here. So, waypoint one. Waypoint two. Waypoint 3, that's shown you how to add in a waypoint manually via the UFC. A quick look at how we're going to use the navigation. Ensure we're in nav mode and if we don't know if we are, just click nav there. We can use our HSI as we saw earlier. So we know waypoint 3 is there and if we want to change we can increment back to waypoint 1. The waypoint 1 is there, let's get it more suitable scale. We could use our HSI here to navigate to from us to that guy there. Or we could use our HUD. We've got a chevron up there to follow on a heading tape and a visualization three-dimensional of the waypoint in the diamond there. Ignore the warning, it's just because we're on idle. So first we're going to fly the waypoint chain. Leeds, can you please lead us to the runway? No. No. I notice we also get an engine limit warning when we get on full power, Lucas. It's strange. I will talk with the developers. Roger. Because it should be disappeared. Now it's off. Roger. You're up. It must be when we're on the ground for some reason. Right, so we're going to follow. I'm guessing you've got my waypoints. Follow the Chevron at 091. Uh, lead and you can see a 3d implementation that's that diamond if you're wondering why it's so high it's because I accidentally set it to six and a half thousand feet and there's no reason why we shouldn't climb up there actually lead so let's climb up to six and a half thousand feet um, up to that waypoint which is a distance of 3.4 miles you can see at the bottom of the hub there so we've got quite some climbing to do I mean this is no f-16 don't get me wrong but it's also you know it handles well it's pretty sprightly good trainer 
this aircraft is used by Brazilian Air Force to patrol the, the Amazon rainforest Roger. Used to intercept uh, drug dealers. Thank you, Lucas. Yeah, this is a perfect plane for that. I'm going to lose altitude, Lee, because I'm going to stall if I go any slower. We're just very heavy and we're not hugely powerful. You can see when the diamond goes outside of the UFC's extents, then it has a cross through it. 0 0.9 miles. Lucas, what's Brazil's frontline fighter? Primary fighter is uh, F5. Yep. Now we brought, some, we closed the deal with uh, Sweden yep. to the Grippens, and we we have uh, we already have, uh, I think uh, one or two Grippens that are already arrived to here. Is it is in phase of tests. We have, I think, Brazil, Brazil brought 39 uh, Grippens. Roger, very and impressive. And we have uh, more or less 200 uh, of these aircraft. Roger. 208 and 9. Okay, uh, it automatically w incremented the waypoint as promised, 2.6 nautical miles, then it will go to our user-injected waypoint, at which point we will start firing some guns, which is the bit everyone, I suppose, has be been waiting for. Two miles, are you still with me, uh, Lee? I am. This lever is the demonstration team from the Brazilian Air Force. Copy. Right, we're going to hit this one perfect, including elevation. Okay, waypoint met, should automatically increment to three, and it has eight miles, and that was our IP in this case, so this is going to be our target. What we should see now is a target on the ground, sorry, a waypoint diamond on the ground, which just so happens to be where the smoke is to help us find it, just in case it didn't work, but it did. There is our target. Now we're going to look at uh, edge ground ordnance. So we've got our, our guy here to live fire and our selector up. We're going to press uh, edge ground, ping. We're going to open up our SMS. We're going to choose our weapon. I'm going to go in with a, uh, I'm going to go with rockets to begin with. If we want to change the method of firing, we probably won't, but we could click on there, got manual or CCIP. We're going to click on CCIP. That's it, I'm ready to fire. Weapon release to fire. You can see I have a CCIP generated reticle in front of me, I'll put that on the target and uh, and rock out. Any worry about over speeding this aircraft, Lucas? The real aircraft has a limit of 280 knots, yep. but uh, as this one is a uh, SFM, doesn't have two limits right now. Oh, I thought this was uh, is this not an uh, external flight model? N not uh, not yet, not oh. external. It's just uh, a mo external model. Yeah but not an external flight. Well, they've done pretty well with it anyway. Uh, it could have fooled me, yeah, actually, to be honest. The guys are, is having a pretty hard work in to make it very, very similar to the real one. I understood. I'm going to start firing. In fact, in fact this aircraft is very precise to air-to-ground missions and Water. have a very long time in station about right. six hours in the station just to wait. Is that because of its efficient engine? Yes, yes. And Roger. Okay, I've just shown rockets next. I'm going to show our Mark 82 bomb. If you're going to do this, get lots of altitude. That's my first warning. Mark 82, method. Manual and CCIP are going to work. CCRP and DTOS are not going to work at the moment. And I'm just going to choose one. So remember, this is not an F-16. We need to make sure we're as fast as we can possibly get the CCIP requires a, a lot of speed so we're up to 4,000 up to five or six thousand at least ideally I'm gonna be a little bit lazy here to expedite this video I'm gonna try and get a bomb on the head the CCIP bombing uh, symbology is exactly as you'd find in almost every kind of mainline fighter you've got a bomb full type plum and you've got a marker at the bottom if the marker is I'll try and move my screen up has a cross in it it's not ready it's off the bottom of the screen if it doesn't have a cross in it is ready to drop. Watch out for not dropping too uh, uh, low. Get as, essentially as fast as you can. Drag it over the target. Press the bomb release. Weapon release, sorry, and you should get a excellent system. What if I wanted air to ground guns, Lucas? What do I just select uh, the air to air to work fine? Roger. So I'm going to select air to air in this case. Gotcha. Can I use that air to air reticle as it's for attacking the ground? Do you think? Yes, you can. Stand by. Just remember, this is a 50, 50 cal gun, so not so much damage on heavy armoured troops. 
Good job. I'm going to use the second detent at the trigger. Get some of that, you suckers. Lovely. Right, next weapon. I'm going to go back to air to ground. I am going to go to... What else have we got? We're going to try dropping a laser. This is all kind of work in progress at the moment. We're going to see if I can get a laser-guided bomb to drop. Uh, maybe you'll try a Hellfire, which is also laser-guided um, a lead. I doubt the Hellfires will work, because they would have had to have coded it specially, which I don't think they can, um, at, at least at the moment. The GBU might work, so we'll go and see how that happens. I presume our AI is currently lazing. To get this to work, I'm going to need to drop from really high up and as fast as I possibly can. You can go straight level and about two miles, more or less, from the target you can drop your bombs. Because it's more or less like the A-10 works. So straight level, two miles. At two miles. Drop the bomb, drop the bomb, drop the bomb. Right. As we don't have the CCRP for now, this should work. Let's see. Come on, catch, 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 catch. It's aiming at it. Nah. I wonder why it's not tracking for us today. Maybe, I don't know, it's just not. Maybe our laser's broken. We're having to do AI lasing. It's very difficult to get it working. I think we'll give that a miss. But you've got that working, you say, Lucas, in practice, yeah? Yes, the guys told me I can't uh, try this one because I had a uh, buddy to laser for me, but he was not flying. And I will test again. If it's not working, I will talk with the developers. Roger, I'm going to leave that with you, Lucas. Okay, guys, let's go do some air-to-air -air in that case then. So, two controls that we saw earlier. We can be in air-to-air -air dogfight or air-to-air -air intercept. I'm looking for a big, handsome F-15. I know he's up here somewhere, so stand by as I try and find... find there he is, in fact. I'm going to aim the board of the aircraft at him. Just select the intercept mode and uncage button. Intercept mode, uncage. Got him. Right, and fire the weapon, weapon release. Zap. Dogfight mode. Right, so it looks like the intercept is for using the sidewinder, the dogfight is for using the guns. Is that right? Yes, it's right. Right, so just to reiterate that for the value of viewers. Two modes of air to air. The dogfight mode is for the guns, and you can see I can get the inertial reticle. And then if I want to use my sidewinder, I'll go to intercept. And then I press cage on cage to release the seeker head, and then it will lock on to the guy, and uh, and that's it. That's really all I've got to show at the moment with the workings of this aircraft. Anything either Lead or Lucas want to add on? Uh, For it's now, a fun module, and it is VR capable. For now, it's a simple model. We can work with some guns, with some bombs, but it will be rised up with a better better guns better weapons the guys are hard working for that they are working now in a new external model to give to go out of this weird propeller rotating site and i think it will be better in a few months brilliant well done everyone lucas thank you very much uh simba thank you very much and we'll see you guys later